Hey guys, in our first few days of e-learning, we're going to talk about acids and bases. And we're going to begin with a lab in which we examine the varying properties of acids and bases. So I want you to go to Google Classroom. When you get there, you'll notice I've shared a doc with you. And it's the Acid Base Properties Lab. It's a template of a lab report. I want you to grab that doc. And when you pause the video, get it and open it up. And then you can play the video and we'll get talking about this lab. All right, now you'll notice that there's a question and a purpose on the, in the lab template. And the question is, what are the properties of acids and bases? What make, makes acids different than bases? The purpose is to investigate and ultimately to describe the contrasting properties of acids and bases. So here's how we're going to design the experiment. We're going to run the same tests on two different acids in two different bases, and we're going to see how do the, those, the results of those tests contrast with one another. We're also going to pick water, which is considered to be neither an acid or a base, sort of a lie. It's actually both acid and bases. But we're going to consider water, which is not, it's not a purely an acid. It's not purely a base. It's kind of an in-between of acids and bases. And the acids we're going to use are hydrochloric acid, HCl, and acidic acid, Hc2H3O2. Now, the hydrochloric acid is what we call strong acid. More on that later, but for now, we're just going to say that it's probably the best example of how acids behave. A weak acid like acidic acid is going to behave like an acid, but maybe not quite as obviously. And then for the bases, we're going to pick NaOH, our strong base. It, it truly exemplifies how bases behave. And then we're going to pick a weak base, NH3 or ammonia, and it's not quite so exemplary of a base, but it's still, it acts like a base. And then finally, we got water. Okay, so here's the design. We're going to take a well plate, a little plastic plate with depressions in it, and we're going to place chemicals in the well plate. In the first column, we're going to use HCl. In the second column, we're going to use acidic acid, HC2H3O2. In the middle, it's going to be water. And then in the last two columns, column four and column five, we're going to put NH3 in NaOH. So acids are on the left, bases are on the right, and water's right there in the middle. The, the columns are the chemicals, and the rows are the tests. I'm going to run tests in the various rows of the well plate. Now I have to for, you know, forgive me, it's old age likely. I failed to run the test for, for pH paper when I, I, I did the video. I got so excited about it, I just forgot to do it entirely. So in your lab report, you're going to just simply have to skip row three of the data table. Now that data table is where you're going to record your observations. So you just kind of type in there, and I'll guide you through as we go. All right, let's get going on. This is a conductivity tester. A conductivity tester tests whether or not a solution conducts electricity. If we place it in the first cell of the table, we notice the light goes on, a sign that the first cell of the table, the HCl, is a conducting solution. When we put it in the acidic acid, the second column of the table, we notice it lights very gently. It doesn't light at all for the distilled water. When we put it in the ammonia, it lights just a little bit. And finally, in the NOH, it lights brightly. So we notice that it lights for the strong acid and the strong base, gentle lighting for the weak acid, weak base, and no lighting whatsoever for the water. Litmus paper serves as an indicator as to what is acidic or basic, because litmus paper will turn a specific color in an acidic solution in a different color in a, in a basic solution. Now there's red litmus paper and there's blue litmus paper, and here we're dipping red in a solution. It doesn't turn color, so we dip blue in the same solution, and the blue turns red when placed in the hydrochloric acid. So we're going to take a blue strip and put it in the acidic acid, and what we notice is that the blue strip turns red in the acidic acid. We'll put a blue strip in water. And here we notice it doesn't turn color. So let's try the red strip to see what it does. And it doesn't turn color to either. So litmus paper doesn't turn color in water. Now what we're going to do is put the litmus paper in the basic solutions. The NH3 comes first. The blue goes in, and it doesn't turn color. So let's see what the red does. The red litmus paper turns blue. So it appears as though litmus paper will be blue when placed in a basic solution. Let's test our final solution, the NaOH solution, with a red litmus paper. And the red turns blue again. Record your observations of the color of the litmus paper in each of the five cells. Phenolphthalein is an indicator. It turns a different color in the presence of an acid compared to a base, thus demonstrating whether the solution is acidic or basic. We're going to put a couple of drops of phenolphthalein in each of our wells. Here are the two acid wells, colorless and colorless. Here's water, colorless again. Now in H3, a weak base, pink, and finally in AOH, another weak, a strong base, and pink again. 
record your observations. Our final indicator test is with universal indicator. Like any indicator, it behaves differently in an acid as it does in a base. We'll put a couple drops of universal indicator in each of our five wells. You'll notice the color. Make observations in your data table. You'll notice the two basic solutions on the, on the right are purple, and the two acidic on the left are orange. Now we're going to run a test to see if acids or bases react with metals such as magnesium. So we're going to take a small strip of magnesium and place it in each well. And here in the first well, we notice some bubbling going on. You know what that's a sign of. Now we're going to take a strip of magnesium and put it in the weak acid. Mm, not so much. Now we'll take a strip of magnesium and put it in water. Boring. And now we'll try the bases. First, ammonia, the weak base. Nah. And then finally, NaOH, the strong base. Hmm. Record your observations. There's only one well here in which we see a reaction. Calcium carbonate is a primary constituent of limestone rock. And limestone rock is often mined from the ground and used in many building materials, such as marble statues. Limestone also forms the foundation of many lakes and riverbeds. What we're going to do is see how, whoa, calcium carbonate reacts with acids and bases. And here we see a rather vigorous reaction with the strong acid, a milder reaction with the weaker acid, no reaction with water, no reaction with the base, and finally we see no reaction with the strong base. So record your observations. There's two significant wells in which we have a reaction going on. So that's the procedure. You have your observations, you record them in the data section, and now as always it's time to write a conclusion. And whenever we write a conclusion, we always respond to the question of the lab. And in this lab, the question is, what are the contrasting properties of acids and bases? And so that's what you're going to write about. We have six rows after we've thrown out the third row. And so what you want to do is examine those six rows and ask yourself, how are acids in columns one and two different than bases in columns four and five? How do they compare and contrast with one another? And then you're going to write six statements in which you write the six contrasting properties of acids and bases. And as you write those statements, I want you to provide supporting evidence, specific references to parts of the data section. You're going to say acids do this and bases do this, and this is how I know. I want you to look in row three of the data table. I don't do that row. But I'll look in row six of the data table and talk to me about it. Now, after you've done your writing, I want you to submit it to Google Classroom. And you're done. And that's e-learning. Then you got some reading to do. So go ahead and do that right now.